Hey everybody, this is Al with El Rey Collection. Today we're talking about some super epic cardboard of J.M. Moreno. Um, it may not be a name that everybody knows, but he's actually, he was ranked by, um, what is it, IFFHS as the 25th best player of the 20th century and the 5th best South American after, guess who, Pele, Maradona, De Stefano and Garincha. So you're talking an epic legend of the game. And uh, JM, his real name's uh, Jose Manuel. Uh, and to be technical, his uh, second last name is Fernandez. And why is he special? Well, he was the leading scorer on perhaps one of the greatest teams, um, dominant teams uh, ever. So, you know, he was, he, he led the the River Plate team that was known as the Machine La Máquina, and uh, and and not only that, he also went to play in other countries and pretty much everywhere he went, whether that was Mexico, Colombia, Chile, he won first division championships. So wherever he showed up, he was a he was a winner. Um, he was also a little bit of a drinker. He was also known as a guy who didn't show up to practice. You know, like a little bit of Alvin I Iverson practice. Who needs practice? Not me. And he clearly didn't because he was a dominant player um, no matter where he went. Um, he was also pretty famous. He's on a ton of different magazine uh, covers. As you'd expect, he promoted many different products, including boots. Uh, I have a pair of those that I, I put on uh, my Instagram uh, page as well, his actual boots for the brand that he uh, that he promoted. I think it's called Sportlandia the pre-Nike days of boots. Um, but his cards, unfortunately, are really, really hard to find. The good news is, is Argentina has some of the best pre-war cards out there. And when you find them, it's incredibly satisfying to add these to, to your collection. So without further ado, it's all about Epic Cardboard on this channel. So I'm gonna show you some of the cards that I have and walk you through some of the nuances for a lot of you, these will be the first time you see these amazing issues. Um, the first one up is what I currently consider, and you have to say currently because these cards are so rare, so infrequent, that it is somewhat common that you would you would find a card from the previous year. This one I deem unlikely because the lace is from 1936, and that's when, that's his second year. So there could be a 1935, um, hasn't surfaced to my knowledge, and there's a very few issues in 1935 that he could be included with. So right now we're gonna go with this is his rookie, um, to me at least. And this Lay's card is amazing. So th we call these Lay's the football, uh, but it's actually uh, issued by a Noblesa Tobacco Company. And on the back, you're gonna notice this really nice uh, graphic of the of the of the football uh, of uh, obviously soccer and then they'll talk to you about some of the rules of the game on the back why they say football instead of football in Spanish I have no idea and it's hyphenated so it's wrong on multiple levels but these cards are just amazing they've got their photographic you know they're just the oval oh just it exudes everything I love about vintage and so that one comes in a white version. And uh, in my experience anyway, although I don't have any uh, empirical data to support this, the green version. So this green version, instead of a black black uh, text on the back, this one is in red. So I like to call this my Christmas card, a little green front and a red back, but um, amazing, amazing. Uh, rookie cards. So unfortunately from there, we jump ahead a very long uh, time to the mid 1940s. And these uh, Bicicleta cut out die cuts, the first die cuts, you know, actually that's not true. Spain had a number of them in the 1920s are just really, really cool, especially when you put them next to one another. Like I have a La Bruna, uh, La Stau, uh, you know, you start to put put these next to one another. These are blank backs, but but on the front you can see that you know clearly their names are here, um, and 
and um, and these are just you know kind of epic. These here's a 1946 uh, Olympia Figuritas Olympia. Look at that mustache, the triangle. SGC did a great job here with this custom cut. It just looks beautiful and perfect. Again, blank back. Most of these will be removed from albums if you find them, and the grades are going to be really low, um, you know, generally. Here's a very, very uncommon uh, card as well. So this is a Figuritas Rook. And, you know, here he is. So he also played in 34, 35 games for the Argentine national team. And... Um, and I think he scored like 19, 19 or 20 goals. He also, uh, in total, every, between all his stops, you know, he he's in for, you know, roughly 500 plus games uh, and, and roughly 250 uh, goals. This is one of my all-time favorites as well, the Figuritas Cola. Just crazy. This is when he, he came back from uh, Chile where he played for Universidad Católica, and then he played for, uh, he was uh, on Boca for that year in 1950. Uh, and then I think he went back to Chile, if I'm not wrong. Uh, here, here's one, which is pretty cool, which is um, a Pelusa. And he only played one one uh, one year for Ferro Corriel uh, Oeste, so that's really relatively easy to to date and and these again blank backs but just the green the size differences i mean these are epic uh, i hope you like my epic california surf shirt too um that was my home team when i grew up in southern california here's um a crack as well figuritas crack the same crack that will ultimately make some of those famous uh, sets from the 1960s and ultimately um, the this one has some writing on it unfortunately but you can just see the uh, the promotion on it estas figuritas um, sin uh, de son canjeables por premios solo sirven para pegar en el, en el album oh no son so what that means is you can't change many of the latin american albums had um you know you'd save up enough of the figures and then you turn fig, figuritas cards and you would turn them in to um you'd turn them in to get a prize this was just saying on the back that you can't save them up and turn them into to for a prize um and then you know later on when he became kind of a broadcaster in in um in the 1960s you know he ended up with uh, a couple he ended up included in a couple of those sets well well after his um his retirement so uh you know back to to you know the the player and the cards epic player top 25 pre-war player fifth best south american player i mean and think of all the names that he's put ahead of by ifhs um leonidas da silva Zico, Socrates, um, you know, R Rivaldo, Romario. I mean, these are just crazy names, you know, Campus, um, Passarella. I mean, you just, you just, I, I think of how good this guy was. You see all the stuff from Argentina in the 19, you know, late 30s, early 40s. It's just so much about him and La Machina. And, I, and I'll do some more videos on his um, La Machina uh, compatriots um, because they, they all deserve, you know, to be to be recognized as well. Whether it's La Stau, La Bruna, um, uh, who else am I thinking of? Uh, uh, Perenera. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll do some videos on them. I hope you really enjoy the Jan Moreno video. It's short because his cards are tough. They are, though, without a doubt, epic cardboard.